Well hi there folks, ever seen one of these? Little foam chuck gliders. You can buy them as cheap as three or four pounds from places like Timu, or if not you can buy them for a fiver in Lidl's. They are great for converting to radio control or experimenting with. I should know, I've made three. A single motor version, a twin, and even a four motor version, which has got four little tiny drone motors in it and flies by differential. Flies really well, and incidentally build blocks for all three of those are on my channel. So what next you might ask? Well actually I did ask on the forums, what did people suggest? They came up with all kinds of wacky ideas. But my logical conclusion was, in fact, it had to be a biplane, of course. So here's a little build blog about how I went about creating the mini little biplane. Not as detailed as some of my other build blogs, because a lot of it is I've already covered. But let's make a start with the fuselage. So the first job when you're starting one of these little projects is take off that little canopy and hollow it out. And I use a bit of wire that I heat over the gas flame on my cooker. Next thing we're going to do is make the ailerons. I've made them slightly bigger than the ones that are imprinted on the wing. So once you've actually done that, you can slide the wing in and commence the next operation, which is going to be to fit the servo that's going to control the ailerons. And here's a little tip. I used to really struggle a bit getting wings lined up properly with the fuselage, especially with these foamies, because the fuselages aren't necessarily straight. This has got quite a bend in it. But one thing I've done is, one of my boards that I made to work on, I put these two cross lines on it, absolutely at 90 degrees. And if you line up on this, nose here, wings there, it m makes life a lot easier as far as getting things level. Plus the other important thing is, I think probably even more important, is measure from the nose to the wingtip that way, measure from the nose to the wingtip that way, because this still didn't look quite right, but I've measured and it's absolutely spot on down to the down to a millimetre. So anyway, little tip for you there. So I'm happy it's true and I've hot glued the wing in position. I've actually got my hot wire and cut a little bit further into that orifice to cut through where the wing is. And then I'm going to fit a two gram servo to operate the ailerons. But before I do that, I'm going to make the elevator. It's pretty thin here, almost impossible to actually make a shallow cut where you don't go right through. But a bit of scotch crystal tape along the join and it's fine. So I've got to put that through the slot and make a cutaway at the back here. Um, and I've made my cutaway there for the aileron servo. Next line up the tail feathers and glue them in. Right so that's tail feathers glued in. That was quite tricky. Put some cu couple of blobs on, pushed it in and had to be very quick. You who poor probably would have been better because that could have been I could have been slow with that but anyway I'm always too impatient. Right so there's the perfect little hole for the 3.7 gram servo. I guess you could use two two grams as well. Save save a couple of grams. So there you are, that slots nicely into there with a slight downslope to the little levers that go on the ailerons. So I've melted a couple of little holes in the in the aileron there and in my box of old servos this is what I use for a lever. Get one of these little things. Oh, cut it off at an angle. Well, obviously you need a pair. Hot glue that into the hole and you've got actuating levers for the ailerons, whatever they call those things. Right, so bend some of this 0.7 mil diameter or 0.8 mil wire to the right shape. The little V in it is, gives you a bit of potential to adjust it once you've made the bends. And here we are. Working beautifully. Make sure you center the servo before you ever install it. Now one of the next steps would be elevator servo but you can't really do that until you've got a motor on and you know where you want to place the servo for the elevator. Sometimes you might need to add weight at the tail to get the centre of gravity right so the very last step is servo elevator. So the next step is to figure how I'm going to fit the upper wing. 
it's just to give me a base idea of where to set it slightly forward for efficiency it should be one and a half times the cord I'm probably going to go about one and a quarter I'm actually thinking I should have gone with plan B which was put the wing underneath but anyway too late now because it's all glued in and hollowed out well I've started putting some struts in to support the upper wing using barbecue skewers put two in at the front here and I used liquid metal because you've got about five minutes then to actually maneuver it to get them in the right plane this way and that way but as you can see I have figured that it's actually going to be quite difficult to locate the upper wing properly on these hence I've made a kind of bit of a cardboard template here with holes in and what I plan to do is transfer those holes onto this make a in other words make some small holes here so that that will locate those you can see what I've done here I've made the cardboard template so that that lines properly up with the trailing edge of the lower wing otherwise it's going to be very difficult <laughs> without a template of some sort it would be very difficult to actually stick that on there and get it get it right in every plane and every diff every place so that's the plan anyway take this off melt a couple of little holes with a slight angle as locators so that I can sit that on so let's get on with it right well that idea of transferring the holes underneath with using a template worked very well had to be sure to actually get them positioned such that it was bang in the middle parallel this way parallel that way but anyway if I just slot these into the holes like this you can see that I've got the line up absolutely right can you see that both tips are in the right place looks fine to me pretty pleased with that I must admit I wasn't sure how it was going to look but I think that looks okay and now all I've got to do is put a couple more struts down this end one two one two but making good progress motor to go in elevator to sort out but looking good so far motor is on speed controller is in here receiver is tucked in there that's the 200 milliamp 2s that I plan to use which is going to sit here so I'm now in a position to figure where this 3.7 gram servo is going to go for the elevator most important thing of course is to fit it once you've got to this stage no point putting it in here and then finding you've got a tail heavy model so what I do is put a bit of tape on and try it in various places center of gravity on biplanes tends to be a bit further forward it's basically a position between the two wings instead of being here it's slightly further forward so too far back there it's going to be tail heavy too far forward it's going to be nose heavy so optimum position probably about here I just realized I haven't got the canopy on at the moment so that's going to make a difference not a huge amount of difference because it only weighs a couple of grams I think it's about there that's where it's going to go just here right anyway hope you found that helpful right well servo in and I even managed to get the wire down through a hole into the fuselage so it's completely hidden unlike some of my earlier builds like the mini little twin which flies really well obviously had to extend the wire I just used the lead from a dead servo so that's everything there now coming through to the cockpit I'm getting close to putting the wire across there to actuate the elevator beginning to wonder if it's big enough but anyway I think it is let's do that right so elevator servo is fitted control wire installed so the next rather bold step from which there's no going back was to glue the top wing onto these center struts and as I said before I've used liquid metal because it gives you five minutes to actually manipulate a bit while it's going off but there's no going back from that and I've tried to go for zero zero incidents between the both both wings which is why I put these barbecue skewers across here just to give me a better idea whether they're parallel or not there's a very slight twist difference between the two wings but I'm going to take it out when I install these struts on the side I can just give one side a little push up although probably not critical anyway 
Right then folks, here it is, finished. Upper wing on. Quite a tricky job actually fitting the upper wing. I mentioned before I've used five minute liquid metal because that gives you a bit of time to work. First this section, as you saw, and then the outer ones, front ones first, to give me time to work. And I've got it actually nice and true, as you can see here. It's level that way. I've tried to get about a zero, zero incidence on the wings. There's just a very tiny little twist, but it's absolutely nothing. I can't get that out. I'm not bothered. Elevator solo in, a couple of little blobs of hot glue there. And I'll just show you the electrics before I actually bury this, which is going to go right back in here with the antenna coming out just there. Because I managed to hollow that out a real long way through. So what have we got here anyway? We've got 10 amp speed controller, quite a lightweight one. This tiny little BR1104, it's a cheap eBay job. It doesn't come with screws, but I found some to fit. Four or five pounds to buy, so dead cheap. That's the drone prop. I've got another prop that I might put on if that's not man enough. Fly Sky FS2A mini receiver. Very cheap, under five pounds, three or four pounds. And battery I intend to use, 200 milliamp 2S. I've just got to make a plug to actually connect it to that. That was for testing. So showing you this before I stash it all away. And I'm quite pleased with the canopy solution, which I've kind of chived out a bit in the middle to save a bit of weight. It's just got a little spike sticking out there, which goes into a hole here. So that goes on nicely like that and the rubber band will hold that. So I'm going to get on now, stash these inside and then it's going to be ready for a maiden. Right, so there it is, totally finished. Electrics tucked nicely in this pretty lightweight 10 amp speed controller. As I mentioned, the receiver tucked way down there. You can see the antenna coming out here, or maybe you can't. Different prop on there, that's a 0320, which I think's got a bit more punch than that little drone prop. Battery tucks nicely in there. There's room for it to go forwards and backwards, but with it just there, looks to be about right, I'd say. All up weight has turned out at just about 100 grams, which is very similar to my mini little solo wing version. And the BR1104 was man enough for that one, so I don't see why it shouldn't work with this one. So I see no reason why it shouldn't fly. Might need a bit of fiddling around because I had quite a lot of trouble with that, the big little version. It took me about three goes changing the angle a bit and the overlap and whatever, and oh, particularly center of gravity before I got it flying well. But as you can see in this video here, the big little biplane eventually flew really well. And the build blog for that's also on my channel. What else to mention? Most of the first part of this video is the same as the build blog for this, which is more detailed. The tricky part, of course, was installing the other wing on the top. So if you need to know anything more about that original part of the construction, check out the video for this one. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Any questions or comments, please stick them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see the very exciting maiden that is coming very soon. So hopefully I'll catch you all later. Bye for now.